Hi there, it's uh, Rodders here from uh, Crooks Terminatus, and today we're going to go through the Death Guard Blight Hauler. Okay, so that's me cutting the pieces from the sprue, being nice and careful as usual. Actually, with this model, uh, there was uh, very little mould lines. Uh, the the whole model was actually really, really quite good. That's me uh, gluing it together, and you'll see that I've actually missed a bit out. You can't tell later on, but up where you put the rear track on, I've glued it together. Uh, and then when I come to put the tracks on, realised that, oh no, I needed this bloody track in there. So I had to cut the rear track up into five pieces just to get it in. But it worked out eventually. So once the, uh, the model's primed with a grey and white primer and then move on to putting down the base colour which is the death card green using a bit of uh, Angel Heraldes uh, method put some uh, paint in your little mixing tray and then thoroughly dilute it ready for the airbrush in retrospect I could have just sprayed a death card green but uh, I didn't have any spray so that's us mixing it up quite a lot I end up doing this about three or four times just to get uh, enough paint to cover the model it actually took quite a lot uh, you can see when I start spraying how thin these coats are uh, you had to be very aware of um, not letting it what's the word I'm looking for but pull on the actual uh, on the model so you had to wait for it to dry in between coats but after about maybe six or seven coats, I've got a really nice, uh, smooth, Death Guard green colour. And you see my uh, all my pieces are um, in sub-assemblies and uh, on cocktail sticks. I like to do that just to be able to get to all the bits that are hard to get to. Okay, once the Death Guard green's all done, I move on to the uh, the fleshy bits, and this is uh, Vallejo's elf tone, elf skin tone, I think it is. And uh, just go on, spray it all on the, the flesh here. It's just taking great care on the uh, edges where it meets the armour uh, and get a nice coverage on that model, on that area. Again, using the uh, thin down uh, method, I didn't get too many problems with the uh, paint come paint flow through the airbrush. Okay, once all the the flesh areas were uh, base coated in the elf flesh tone, I moved on to Vallejo's uh, pink color. I can't remember which pink it is. Anyway, thin down, nice, and uh, basically where all the uh, the fleshy parts meet something, where it strains the flesh, like up by the uh, the armor plates, up by the brass band and round the the belly, and round uh, any metal parts. This is where I spray the pink to give it more of a sort of stressed look. Once it's um, all sprayed with the pinks. I then go over it with the uh, army paint or strong tone, just one one or two coats of the army paint or strong tone, and that blends it all together and gives it a really nice fleshy tone. I'm not a big fan of the darker flesh. I like the uh, the sort of pinkier flesh colours, which are on most of my other Death Guard models as well. Again, paint particular attention and make sure it doesn't overflow into the green. It does a little bit but uh, you can go back over that with a death guard green just to tidy up any mistakes. And then we go on to the other side. You can see it a bit better here where I'm applying the, uh, the darker pink to the areas where it causes a little bit more stress on the skin. So 
once all the skin's done and the the base coat of greens on there, as you can see, it's started already. But the uh, going on to the brass areas, the paint I'm using is uh, Vallejo's bright bronze, thinned down a bit, so it's all the areas you see are all having two thin coats uh, applied. Taking my time to make sure it doesn't run off, and using the capillary action, fly down the uh, the creases, but making sure it's all all the brass areas are done. Once they're all done, then it's just a case of going over all the green and all the brass with uh, Army Painter Strong Tone. Making sure it doesn't pull anywhere. And it takes about two two or three coats to get a good coverage in the, to the tone that I was looking for. making sure that it doesn't pull anywhere so it leaves tide marks that's quite a, a constant battle and using a bit of Dan Latham's technique is drawing the uh, the shade to where you want it to be darkest a bit like his highlighting technique but as you can see it's already had one coat this is me applying the second coat just to dirty it up. Luckily on this model I didn't dip my paintbrush into my coffee cup as you can see there. So that was good. No paint flavoured tea. We drink. Thank you very much. So again, going in with some uh, strong tone, and just as you can see here is a better uh, example, making it all wet, dampen the area with the strong tone, but then drag it towards where you want the most of the tone, which is obviously down at the bottom. Now later on, I didn't uh, video this, but once all the, those tones were all dry, I ended up going back in and using a bit of Leviathan purple and uh, using um, the paintbrush, dampening the area and then dotting some Le Leviathan purple around at the bottom which gave it a, a nice distinctive tone. However, here we see we're doing the eyeball. With a bit of Mephist in red, we're going to start doing the uh, the shading of the, the eye eyeball lens, whatever you want to call it. So just doing it in a little curved crescent moon shape. Being careful not to get it onto the other, the metal bars. And then highlighting it with a lighter red, I think it was blood, bloody red from Vallejo in the same sort of shape as we did previously and then add in, I think it was a little bit of bone white just to uh, brighten up the colour and give that third shade to the, uh, the lens. Once that was done it was a case of getting some light grey putting a couple of the reflective dots in there on the black area as well as doing a little crescent shape down at the bottom of the, the red lines slowly slowly catchy monkey you can just see inside the mouth there area there <coughs> what I did with that area was just kept adding Vallejo, uh, sorry, Army Painters uh, red shades until it built up and built up taking the uh, the look in the mouth there and it turned out not too bad so that's a bit of pure white 
on the uh, the reflections. Okay, that's me just adding some bone white to the missiles because I've done some shading in there for the fleshy bits. So I'll just add in a little bit of bone white. I don't like using the pure white because it'll just be too stark. The bone white against the contrast of the dark colors isn't too bad. Then just adding a little bit of red dot to the tips of those missiles. Okay, so moving on, nearly finished. Got the uh, mix of uh, bright bronze from Vallejo and silver from Vallejo. Mix it together to give a bit of a highlight for all the brassy parts. Going over all the brassy parts, just being careful not to get onto the green armour. I did go over it a few times, but managed to clean it up. So once all the, the brass was done, and highlighted go back and get some death guard green to do some edge highlighting on all the panels so get my death guard green out watering it down because you don't want it it's quite thick from the pot rolling it up to get a nice wee point and here we go so all the little cracks and cuts and uh, panel lines. I'm just going to give it a little highlight. As I was saying to uh, Don before, the quest for the thinnest paintbrush or the smallest paintbrush to do all these edge highlights years ago, only to find that getting a bigger brush with a finer tip was actually the way to go. So this is a size one brush from element games and it's this the brush that I used for the whole model for all the uh, edge highlighting and all the detail works all done with this brush as you can see just down at the bottom of that leg plate you can see the the mottled purple effect and at the top of that leg plate you can see it as well just to add a little bit of difference to the plain armor plates so going in for the second highlight on the edges, added a bit of I think it's scorpion green to the death guard green, just to give it a little bit of a brightness on the uh, edges of the the points of the uh, the armor plates, just for a sort of graduated highlight. Again, still using that same brush. <laughs> Better mix, and I'm going and do the uh, more highlights. Just on the edges of these um, panels, and on some of the cracks. But I don't do it on the over the the previous highlights, I just do it on some of it so you can still see the the previous highlight already definitely having uh, the paint mixed to the right sort of <laughs> consistency helps when you're doing these highlights if it's too thick it dries on the tip of the brush, if it's too thin it starts running everywhere. And on all the edges of these panels. And underneath all the scratches. You can also see where I've put some extra battle damage which is a bit of charred brown just under where the paintbrush ferrule is. A couple of splodges of brown and then highlight them with the the lighter edge highlight colour on the underneath just to give it those scratchy looks. It actually turned out not too bad. Tried not to do too many of them because otherwise it looks like a, a 
camouflage scheme rather than battle damage. Uh, anyway, just highlighting the mandibles and the way I painted them was uh, base coated them that colour, which is uh, sombre grey and then when they were dry put a coat of black templar over it which gave it that darker blacky look and then uh, a coat of leviathan purple over it just to give it a little tone and then do the edge highlights with sombre grey again and that's all it was for them and they turned out really well I was actually quite worried about them but I shouldn't have been Being careful not to get the grey on any of the other parts of the model that have already been painted. Now we're going into the uh, the rust, a bit of typhus corrosion, and then mix that with um, some weathering powders, the rusty colour, and then just place it strategically over the brassy areas. So we'll mix that in with the, the typhus corrosion. You can see, just adding it in there. And then with a little bit of water, just mix it in. I mean, the typhus corrosion is good, but I just wanted it to bring the tone of it up a little bit and uh, make it a little bit more rusty rather than the dark color of the typhus corrosion. It's very mucky stuff. Takes a while to get all that stuff mixed to get together. I do add in some of that orange, more orangey colour in later on, but initially it's just the typhus corrosion and the lighter colour. No, no. Then we'll just add in. You can see it's quite potent that orange colour, you can just see it changing there and that's the colour I was going for it's not quite as dark anyway, so applying the uh, the corrosion and the rust just to uh, mostly the lower areas but not all over it, you don't want to cover everything but all the tracks and uh, inside the tracks and mostly over the, all the brass areas a nice view of his ass and his ass stinger it's just adding it to the front now you see you've got an old paintbrush for this don't want to waste your good ones and the fact that it's splayed out like that kind of helps with the randomness of the uh, rust application. So, happy little accident, as uh, old Bob Ross would say. Like a bit of Bob Ross. Okay, I added a little bit more of the uh, orange rust in there and just applying it over the, the darker rust that we had first. Just in some areas. The trick is with that is not to put loads of it down. Anyway, once it's dried, do the old uh, patina effect. So a bit of nihilin oxide, and I've watered it down. A lot of people use it straight from the bottle, but I water mine down. And the trick is, is not to use a lot of it. I see a lot of people using loads of it, and it just doesn't really look right. So basically, where any where water would pull, that's where I'm trying to apply it and it turns out quite effective if you don't use a lot of it again you can just see on the top there some of the leviathan purple mottled effect that I've done on the panels kept them close to the bottom of the panels it looks quite good, I think. And 
was only after I started to get to this point of painting where the uh, the weapon mounts are attached to the body. Some eagle eye viewers may see that half of it's painted green and half of it's painted brass. I didn't notice that until I'd actually put it together and at this stage. But not to worry. Okay, uh, that was the model basically finished. So moving on to the base. Got a bit of uh, a grill and earth and some astro granite. Just tried this for the first time, mixing the two types of uh, basin paints together. So we've got a couple of patches of the a grill and earth, and then the rest of it astro granite dried. Uh, a bit of mix. What's this? this is strong tone. Yeah. So this is um, army painter strong tone, and uh, paint that over the because I didn't actually want a grey base I just wanted the texture from it thinking about it now what I could have done was just mix them brown paint in with the astro granite and that would have been fine but I noticed that the, the strong tone just wasn't cutting it so I mixed a bit of uh, charred brown and army paint and strong tone together and then went over it again thinned it down with a little bit of water and uh, went over all the grey areas missing out the grelin earth patches and actually come out with the the effect that I was looking for in the first place so note to self just to add in some charred brown with some astro granite and I'll get the colour I'm looking for and not have to do this stage with the base I didn't really want to do too much to it. Um, the model was good enough to stand alone, so the base is just a very basic couple of colours, some couple of stones, some weathering powders, and that was it. So once that had all dried, give it a dry brush with some khaki and some uh, bleach bone or bone white just to pick up the raised areas. Not a heavy dry brush, just a light dry brush just to catch the tops. There we go. And those holes are already there from the base. It was from uh, the Conquest magazine subscription. Which, have, uh, which is all complete now, which is a shame because it's quite a good, it's the only magazine subscription I've ever actually seen to the end. It was really good. I wonder if they'll do another one because it's quite successful. Okay, so here we have some fallen rocks from Luke's APS Geek Gaming, the Scenics range. Now his uh, basin material was brilliant, but I didn't want all the grassy on it. Grass parts from it so I just used some of the fallen rocks and added in my own little tufts just because I wanted it quite barren the base so I've put the model on the base just to see where the best place to apply the rocks is and uh, then apply some super glue and place some rocks yeah We look around and see where else can I put some. So, with the model off and the rocks placed where I wanted them, it's just a case of adding some little bits of grass, a little dollop of super glue, and then pull off some of the grass tufts so you can see the top corner, snip off the base to make it all level. And then with the tweezers, place it in the area and just leave them till they dry hard. Once they've dried, then they take off the uh, the loose ones. I've made the mistake before of trying to take off the loose ones and pulling out the whole tuft. There we go, just adding those little tufts in there in the middle of the rocks. And then a quick manipulation, make sure it's in. And leave it 
and wait for it to dry completely and then you can go in and add uh, take away the excesses just sprinkling some of the, the weathering powders on and then just blending it in with the base. I used two colours here as you can see just to give a bit of tone to the base and I think it works out alright. A bit of the lighter colour on the grill and earth patches as well as over the rest of the base just to give a bit of difference really. Just mix it in with the paintbrush and then when I got it the way I want it get a damp paintbrush put it over it let it dry and that's it done and I've seen people use uh, what you should use is probably isopropyl alcohol but I don't think it really needed it and then that's it hopefully that, that water will just keep it in place I mean, yeah, when it dries out, some of the, um, oh, that's the best friend, a hairdryer. Just be careful that you don't hold it over it too much, otherwise it'll melt the base, which I've done before. And that's it, that's the base done. Looks pretty decent, nothing special, nothing spectacular. And then after the rim's painted, here in its glory, doing his little uh, disco dance on the return table skin I think turns out quite well only having three, two colours mainly on it and then a wash of strong tone pretty chuffed at how it come out only another three to do <laughs> so thanks very much for watching and uh, we'll see you soon